so let's um let's touch on something you said there, Mr. Crockett, where you felt like, you know, Jeff Jarrett wanted to be like Ric Flair. I actually held him to account and said that his career was based on Ric Flair. And I think producer Steve actually has that clip for us ready to review right now. So we'll play that and let you guys. That would apply to half the wrestling business. (laughs) (laughs) It's one thing to, to piggyback his success dream to wear his belt and be in his faction and steal his finishing move and his strut. And you just oh, I, I forgot he, 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 he patented the strut, he, which he didn't, which is a joke. How he shuffles Jackie Fargo made your boy, buddy Rogers or the original strutters. And so Rick owns the figure four. No, I'm just saying you're a great value. Rick flair with your blonde hair and your figure four and your struts. <laughs> Conrad, you're digging, pal. You well, look, look really... behind you. Two of the three of those belts are synonymous with Ric Flair. No, they're not s- synonymous. Yes, they are. What? Yeah, buddy. And- okay, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, pal. You are absolutely drinking the Kool-Aid. Y- you don't think that the, the domed globe and the big gold belt, those two belts behind you are synonymous with Ric Flair? His name is attached to them. They're not synonymous. Dory Funk, Briscoe, do I- Harley Race. Jeff Jarrett, come on now. Which one of these is not like the other? No, hey, I'm talking about the NWA belt. Yeah. Rick was one of many good to great champions. And he managed to be one of those great champions without having to own the promotion in order to get the belt. Oh, here we go, Conrad. Yeah. Yeah. What what happened when you were doing the podcast and saying, hey, yeah, uh, the only guy who I knew would show up because we weren't financially able to put guys to long-term deals. What happened to that statement? Well, no, that's factual. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. And then we want to talk about the, the big, big gold one. Yeah. The one that Rick took up to WWE. Yes. Oh, okay. That's yeah. And Crockett sits on the back of the bus and saying, yeah, we didn't get to end the right way. Well, no kidding, you moron. <laughs> I nice love little shot for you there. Uh, Jeff, I love you. I, I love, love you. I love but it. But you're going to get the shit beat out of you. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. But, you know, again, you know, guess who signs the checks? Hey, I, I got a good one for you, Dave. I'm going to wear a blade on my right fan and my left. One for me and one for Jeff in case you don't have one. It's no fun getting cut by somebody else. Trust me. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, I, I know that because I had to do Art Nelson yeah. one time. Art, I, Art, show- Art taught me how to make one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> The last guy I cut was Goldberg, and I put 18 stitches on him. <laughs> well, I'm hyperventilating. I'm hyperventilating. <laughs> he would hit. Yeah, Jeff, I, Jeff, I, 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 I hit I'm a gusher. Not, yeah, I, I've got to talk about Jeff again. You know, I, I listen to him. He always has these barbs or comments that he's trying to irritate you. He's trying to get you off kilter. Now, Dave, Dave, again, Dave, Dave, I, Dave, when they're talking about you, you're doing something good. Haven't you learned that? Well, and I look at it, he's lost control. If he has to, to find someone to belittle, you know, or try to belittle, well, then inwardly, he's not there. That confidence is not there. So, Jeff, suck it up. You know, you and Jay, you know, I, they're again, I respect you, but it, it, you know, well, it's, I, it's, it's going to, it's going to be, I hate to say this, Mr. Crockett, but he doesn't respect you 